and another guy making his show debut in studio, Squally Canada. Squally, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Hey, thanks for having, having me. I'm the, glad to be here, man. The swag level has just gone significantly up <laughs> That's right, in man. Studio B. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the relaxed whack, athlete whack. <laughs> <laughs> but a year and a half ago, uh, I was giving you and your dad and I think some of the coaching staff a tour, and, and here we are. You had dreads then. Yep, yeah. I had dreads, man. You know, as the BYU honor crew goes, you can't have a hair past your ears or touching your shoulders, so you know how to get rid of the dreads. Yeah. But I do miss them, though. Yeah, how tough, how tough was that, man? Oh, uh, dude, I remember snipping the first dread uh, on my couch. I was looking at my mom. She just starts laughing. Tears are streaming down Squally's face. Man, it was rough. I saved the dreads, though. Uh, I, you had the dreads. I had, not with me, but they're back at home. I told my mom to keep them. There you so go. I'm going to throw them away. Oh, yeah. You got to keep the dreads. Absolutely. Squally Canada with us on BYU Sports Nation. It's always interesting when you talk to a transfer about uh, the school that they find they feel like is a better fit. So, I mean, you started at Washington State, you come to BYU, you have to get rid of your dreads and take on the honor code. So why why was it that you wanted to come to BYU? Well, there was a lot going into it. Um, my friend Kahari uh, was committed here, and, you know, he called me up and was like, yo, uh, come to BYU. And I was like, uh, I never even heard of BYU because, you know, growing up I didn't watch a lot of – college football or football at all in general but um he was like yeah man it's a great program you know I really like the coaching staff uh come be a part of the team so I sent them my um my papers and within minutes um I forgot his name I think it was Jeff Jeff Martin yeah Jeff Martin mm -hmm. he he recruited me at BYU I mean from uh, Boise State so he remembered who I was and we just got the ball rolling from there but yeah, it was it was definitely difficult, especially with the honor code and cutting my dreads. But then after a long talk, sitting down with my dad, he's all, "This would be good for you. It's gonna make you a better man off the field, and you can always grow your hair back." <laughs> <laughs> so that's right. That's, that's how right. it came about, and yeah. next thing you know, I'm here. And and I believe that uh, was Mike Mike Leach was the coach, right? Yeah, he was. I, I believe that since he attended BYU, he was uh, helpful in some way in this. Like certain schools, no, but okay, BYU's fine. Uh, I, I mean, that's a touchy subject because okay. he was, uh, he had, they had the way the release goes up there with his rules is, um, like you can't go to a, a team that, that they're going to play in the near future. Sure. And then you can't go to, so I couldn't go to anywhere in the Pac-12 conference. And then from there he could decide and like what teams he wants you to go to and block you from. So it, it's, it was weird. So I, I don't, I don't think he probably saw BYU as a threat or anything, which is bad on his part. So, <laughs> so um, I, I sent him the lease. Uh, uh, I put BYU on the paper, and he was like, "Yeah, sure, go ahead, go to BYU." I didn't even know BYU was his uh, alma mater until I went on Twitter and fans were tweeting about it, and I'm like, "Oh, wow, I don't even know he was LDS." So he, uh, yeah, it's, it's LDS ish. <laughs> yeah. Worlds colliding for sure. <laughs> Squally Canada here with us in Studio B. Uh, off season now, and this is what Jeremy and I feel like the most compelling off season in BYU football history, just because of all of the coaching changes and the new offense and the Heisman Trophy winner Ty Detmer coming back, mm. and all of these former players that excelled here coming back to coach this BYU team. So it's like we hit the reset button. How has the off season been for you when you came here expecting one thing and now it's something entirely different? Uh, it's it's been a grind. You know, it's been a big difference between the strength coaches as well. And uh, speaking of strength coaches, I just want to give a big shout-out to them, Coach New, uh, Coach Just, Coach AJ, and the, uh, the assistant coaches working with them. But um, adjusting-wise, is I would think it's better. Ty Denver's coming in with a different offense. He's coming in with a pro-style offense. And uh, I think that fits my run style and Jamal's run style better as well. But everything's been great. The coaches are great. Reno's great. He's a funny guy. Uh, Coach, is he? <laughs> tell me, <laughs> tell me, you tease him, Squally. Oh, the running back room gets. There, there's a lot of jokes going on there. <laughs> well, you know, we get serious, but when it's time to joke around and joke, you know, uh, people get flamed up. They get torched real bad. Reno gets torched. <laughs> me and uh, Jamal torch Reno all the time. You know, he tortures us back, but it, it gets, it gets, it gets bad in there. So there's nobody safe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your name. Um, what's your given name, and then how did the nickname of Squally come about? Um, yeah, I'm not – I can't give out my real name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's confidential. Okay. Uh, <laughs> not on your bio. Uh, it's not on my bio, yeah. so shout out to those guys. Um, 
So I'm pretty sure you guys could end up finding it on the internet. It's not oh, that we'll hard. Find it. You can find it. You <laughs> definitely <laughs> find it. It's not hard. Come on. No, nothing's a secret anymore. But um, so Squally, where does Squally come from? First of all, Canada is my real last name. That's not a fake name. Um, Squally, and you're American. I'm definitely American. Okay, just checking. So um, when I was like, I, I, the story is always it's, you're gonna hear a switch, but it's best just to hear it from my dad. I'm pretty sure. You don't even know the story. I know the story. I for, I always forget it though. Well, I mean, he. I don't know. Uh, at the spring game, somebody asked him. So whoever whoever that uh, guy was that asked him and wrote it down, he has the story, like the exact story. A reporter? Yeah, a reporter. Him. So I don't know if you guys can hunt that guy down. But um, <laughs> so what, what I believe it is, where it came from, uh, they set me down on the table, and uh, I used to watch the trees out in the front yard. And I guess it was like squall trees or something like mm -hmm. that. And I guess one day he just came home and was like, you look like a little squally. And I was in – I was too young to even know what it was. Mm -hmm. At first, it was boo squalling. So from time to time, you heard my parents call me boo squalling. But as I got older, they dropped the boo and just kept the squalling. So that's that's how it came about. Your dad, Byron, yep. told the story to the Salt Lake Tribune. Mm, you found it. Yeah. Wow. Found it. <laughs> the internet, bro. <laughs> <It's> nothing <laughs> nothing right, safe. Right here, man. You found his name, too. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see you. We see all. If Squally Canada had a nickel for every time someone asked him if Squally was really his first name, well, he would have a lot of nickels. <laughs> That's the way the article went. Yeah. I think Jay Drew wrote that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Looking ahead to Arizona and to Utah after that and UCLA, loaded schedule in 2016, how do you feel about the slate of games that BYU has lined up as an independent football team moving into the first season under Kalani Satake? I feel it's great. It's a it's a great opportunity to showcase our, our showcase our skills, and show the country what we could do. Uh, this off season has been great. I feel like the team has been really bonded and picking up from last year. Not too many people left, so we have a lot of returning players. As you know, Taysom Hill came back. Um, Jamal's back. Tanner's back. Um, and, you know, we lost some receivers. Mitch Matthews and uh, Kurt Henderson, Devon Blackman, but. Um, the youngins coming up, the freshmen that red shirt and or whatnot that didn't play last year, they've been doing a great role of working hard and uh, learning the plays. So I feel like with the schedule coming up, I think we're ready for it. And nobody's backing down. You know, we're all in the weight room on the field pushing each other. So I, I, I'm ready. The team's ready. I think we're going to be ready. I think everything's going to go great this year. The Vegas Bowl was interesting because we were all excited that you got to play somehow, which was weird, right? Yeah. And then, un and then the worst possible situation happens on your one carry. It's a fumble, right? Yeah, so a, how has that made you maybe a better running back, or how have you tried to put that behind you? Because that's not who you are, Yeah. that one carry, right? Yeah, it's definitely not. So building up to that, I spent the whole season on scout team, you know, having fun. Paying the price. <laughs> you know, second year on scout team. So, you know, I built a lot of chemistry with those guys. And then um, they find out, they keep asking me, are you bowl eligible, are you bowl eligible? I'm like, yeah, I'm bowl eligible, but I, I, I'm not sure if I want to play because, you know, I haven't done anything with this offense all year. And they were like, well, yeah, we want you to play. So I'm like, all right. So they bring me up uh, preparation for a bowl week, bowl weeks, I should say, two, three weeks. And um, I'm, getting, I'm getting reps, but I'm not getting, like, playing reps. I'm getting, like, one or two reps here and there. So when we get to Vegas, we get the reps, and each day in practice I get one, two, one or two reps, two at the most. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm not playing. They just want to trick me like and bring me up. <laughs> so we're in the game. It's 28-0, yeah, and I'm on the sideline. I'm like, there's no way I'm getting in this game. So I'm automatically zoned out like, yeah, I'm not getting in this game. So I'm sitting there just you know, trying to cheer my teammates on. Next thing you know, Squally, get out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. So I'm jogging out there. I'm looking at the crowd. Everybody's like, you know, not cheering for me, but you could just hear the crowd and the chants or whatever. And I'm like, man, this is so real. And we caught, I remember the play was Gray. So Gray is like, uh, it's an option. He could either, Tanner could either hand it off or throw the slant. So I'm like, oh. Dang, so it's not even a for sure run. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, man, I got to really – I don't want to, like, pull the ball and then cause a fumble, and then I don't want to, like, not clamp down on the ball and, you know, fumble it. So he calls Gray. I remember him. I'm reading – I'm checking my reads, and I point out I point out to the middle linebacker because Tanner made a check, and that's the guy I got to pick up. So I get the ball, and I wasn't sure if he was pulling it away or giving it to me. 
but I went back and watched film. I take completely responsibility that. Yeah, so I, I didn't clamp down on the ball all the way. As soon as I got the ball, somebody was in the backfield. Next thing you know, I'm on the ground, and I'm like, I don't even have the ball. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad news. <laughs> this yeah. is bad news. And I, I, I know as soon as I got to the sideline, it was going to be over. There's no way they are ever going to put me in the game again. But in the off season, it's just been about mental toughness, just like trying to get myself mentally right and, yeah. and not worry about it. Got to get you juiced about what's to come, right? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm I'm excited. I can't I can't wait for the first game to redeem myself. Squally, great to have you in Studio B, man. Really entertaining conversation. We would like you to sign our stretch white flag if you'll give us your autograph. Uh, I don't even know what number I am. So. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's your name then, yeah. yeah. Squally will set it apart.